Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome back. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you find the uh, information in this video useful. It's a free way to support the channel and really promotes the quality uh, information that I provide every week to those that really need it. So starting off before we get into really the nitty gritty is um, really I like to put out some uh, some questions. I haven't done so for a while, but um, uh, the last one, one of the last ones I asked was when does a central bank typically uh, prefer to hold interest rates and why is that important is because interest rates are one of the primary drivers of currency value meaning that it creates demand or supply right you get um the uh, the higher um interest rates are is the more demand that you will uh, typically see and the lower the interest rate is uh, the less demand right so um but what we uh, traders tend not to understand is why uh, interest rates are potentially uh, going uh, higher or lower and it's really one of the factors is to do with um, uh, inflation and uh, so when does the central bank prefer to hold interest rates is when the when inflation is really at two percent right because central banks have a two percent goal so 83 percent of the voters uh, in this question got it right and it's uh because central banks have a two percent inflation goal every year and that's when they will uh want to hold rates if they if inflation is above the two percent target then uh, central banks will tend to want to hike rates um, and when inflation is uh, at you know below two especially if it's in the minus then they will typically want to either cut rates or go into some sort of quantitative easing so the answer to the question is uh, when inflation is at two percent and that's when central banks will prefer to hold rates and have more of a neutral bias anyways let's get into the uh the week's uh, uh fundamental analysis and before we do just to uh give a quick reminder of uh, the trade process and really how we should how trading 180 really kind of approaches the market and myself is really applying fundamental analysis to establish medium to long-term directional bias and even the short term but short term is more random and then apply technical analysis um, and supply and demand strategies to time trade entries establish profit targets and risk management so um, let's go on to this week's week ahead and uh, zooming in the week ahead Federal Reserve Chairman Powell will speak Friday at the Fed's annual Jackson Hole Wyoming conference with investors looking for any details on the central bank's plans for tapering its massive asset purchase program that's going to be um, important because tapering uh, means uh, really um, uh, will create demand uh, it reduces the need for the economy to rely on the bank and money printing so that is actually positive and should appreciate the dollar which basically we've been seeing and we'll get into the uh, the dollar technicals and price action um, in a sec uh, other important releases include the european central bank meeting minutes second quarter gdp uh, updates for the us mexico and germany and flash market pmi data for the us uk eurozone japan and australia so investors also await data on us personal spending and durable goods orders eurozone consumer morale and china industrial profits really i think the the most important um uh, uh, news events on, on this is going to be obviously Jackson Hole, um, uh, the ECB uh, meeting minutes as well, and uh, the second quarter updates for the US. I don't think it's going to be that important. Or there's going to be that market moving, and the reason why is because we've already got the um, the preliminary uh, numbers, the first numbers, and uh, the updates are generally uh, close to that. So unless there is a massive uh, miss on the preliminary, I think the uh, second quarter GDP updates are going to come out as expected. It's already pretty much been priced into the market. So uh, let's go and get onto the technicals and a bit more fundamentals as well in depth. And starting off on the dollar index, and the dollar index is a measure of dollar strength against um, the major currencies like the euro the pound the yen and i think the australian dollar and uh, as i've been saying uh, pretty much since the federal reserve announced uh, um, uh, tapering 
uh, back in June. You can go back and look through all my videos and uh, go back to this this area here and this time here. It's 15th, 16th, 17th of June when I did the analysis. I was saying that you want to be a buyer of the dollar, right? And this is pretty much what's been happening. This is not, uh, you know, predictions based off of some um, sort of Elliott Wave uh, nonsense this is the market doesn't move based on Elliott wave or price action it moves um, generally in a medium to long term based off of um, a fundamental analysis and fundamental analysis is understanding interest rates inflation and GDP right and the relationship between those so it wasn't hard really to understand where prices were going you know we're likely to go right in 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 the uh, medium to long term um, but what we do have is obviously more um, is more uh, positive news surrounding the dollar and every time we get positive news surrounding the dollar we should make you know higher highs and higher lows now you're not necessarily looking to trade the um uh, the dollar index but what you are looking to do is understand um where uh, the, the direction of travel is and then uh, you can then trade dollar crosses right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, include all of this in the zone and the reason why this is is because we make lower highs and lower lows right low high and then low lower highs and lower lows are areas where there are areas of demand right so uh, wide demand zone yes but we also want to break that down uh, with using support and resistance because support and resistance is just past uh, previous supply and demand zones that have been projected into the future so that's really one of the supply zones I think I think this area as we can see level has been uh, has been used several times where uh, there might be a bit of a limit to uh, any kind of dollar strength also as well I think it's where the the the, the, um, uh, the, the, the investors I guess are waiting on signals on Jackson Hole right if if the Fed come out and Jerome Powell comes out and says uh, he's maybe a bit hawkish or dovish, I should say, uh, on on the um, on the dollar, meaning that he's not necessarily looking to hike rates anytime soon, um, or doesn't give a signal that they are. Then you could see a temporary fall on the dollar. But if they are, they continue to be uh, hawkish and uh, signal that they are looking to taper, then you could see more upside uh, potential. And um, again, getting into a bit more nitty gritty, uh, we did have the US finance, um, initial employment, unemployment claim, sorry, drop off for fourth straight week, which is positive. So applications for the US state unemployment benefits drop for a fourth consecutive week, a trend that suggests labor market conditions are improving as the economy recovers, right? So that's, that's very positive. On the negative side, we do have the Delta variant, that is causing havoc um, around the world um, and causing some risk off sentiment, which has been um, really kind of plaguing certain um, commodity currency trades. But um, Delta case wave in the US Northeast may be nearing its peak. So parts of the US Northeast may be near the peak of the latest COVID-19 wave, though there are still key areas of concern. Hospitalizations and deaths are likely to mount in the weeks to come. So, um, Hopefully, there is a potential peak uh, to uh, the, the COVID um, 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 hospital hospitalizations and <clears throat> the wave. And um, once that starts to come to an end, then we should see um, some positive, um, you know, um, uh, uh, economic data uh, when it comes to uh, not just the US but also around the globe and more risk on sentiment rather than risk off so um, there are obviously um, uh, headwinds I guess in the uh, with, with the dollar just like any other currency but in general I think the path of least resistance is to the uh, is to the um, is to the upside and uh, we also have uh, the CME group. They do a uh, Fed watch, um, and they've got a Fed watch tool. And I've clicked on the probabilities tab, and what you'll see here, and let me just zoom in a, a little bit, is uh, meeting probabilities. So what the market does is it factors in um, uh, rate hikes, right? So zero to twenty-five uh, points or, uh, or basis points, um, and then a hike. And these are the hikes, right? So this is where we are currently at zero point two five percent. If you scroll down and these are the dates of the meetings, you can see the probability of a rate hike gets more and more, right? So we get to 2023 and we get to actually, there should be a 40% hike, 
uh, currently, and this is subject to change as well, depending on as the data comes out. But currently, if things stay as they are, then by 2023, 40% of the market think um, that there will be a rate hike. So what do you do from there? You, you basically buy the rumor, right? This is buying the rumor. You're trying to get in um, and buy the dollar while it's a bargain because if they start to hike rates, yeah, by the time they do hike rates, the market would have made money and uh, every other retail trader would be looking to buy as they actually hike rates, but that would have already been priced in, right? So this is um, an important tool to uh, keep an eye on. FedWatch tool, you can always Google it. Uh, CME FedWatch tool, and in 31 days, um, we'll see what, what the next um, uh, meeting is saying. But uh, the, the Jackson Hole um, uh, meeting will definitely be a uh, banks will be watching that, institutions will be watching that. And the reason why is because th if they do uh, sound a bit more hawkish, then in fact, these numbers could actually change uh, for the better. Right, so if you're buying dollars, that's always going to be positive. Anyways, getting back to dollar index. So if you do want to be a buyer, um, really waiting for pullbacks and then looking for um, this is confluence in any other dollar cross. If you do want to get short, now is pretty much the time. But obviously, wait. I would say wait for uh, Jackson Hole and what happens with Jackson Hole before looking at making any kind of dollar decisions. Moving on to the dollar yen. Um, dollar yen again is a bit of no man's land. I think it's going to be the same thing with all dollar currencies uh, this week. All eyes are going to be on uh, Jackson Hole. So. I don't necessarily expect um, you know um, any movement as far as if, if prices go to the upside. It's probably just just uh, positioning. Who knows whether you know it's going to be a sustained move? Because again, traders are looking at um, uh, the future and forward guidance, so they're really waiting on um, the, uh, the the Jackson Hole um, um, and, and Jerome Powell. So I think any moves this week on dollar pairs and I think maybe pairs overall are just going to be pretty much exercises in liquidity hunting and drawing traders to the upside and then stopping those out and then drawing traders to the downsides and stopping those out until we get a clear direction from the Fed. This is probably what we're going to see um, in, in the short term. So uh, again, if you do want to get involved though this week in any kind of dollar trades, then you're probably uh, looking at um, a short trades going to be here long trades are going to be at this demand zone is this this supply zone isn't necessarily the greatest uh, i would probably say the best area of shorting is here as this is a nice fresher area of uh, supply um and this level's been touched i think a couple of times as well so i think any moves down to the 108 level it would be looking at getting uh, long on those um uh, would be the, probably the best areas to look for uh, long or short trades depending again on your fundamental bias dollar swiss and uh, again dollar swiss um we are making there is some demand here not the strongest area of demand to be fair it is um it hasn't really made any higher highs so but there is demand there if you do get a pullback it's okay not not fantastic and personally i would probably not want to look for daily demand um i'd really want prices to kind of make some new highs before looking at getting involved in that trade or if prices do come down to this one oh um sorry this 0 0.905 area that for me is a really nice area of demand you can see that strong demand right there and then looking for any kind of uh, long trades in and around that area um again the swiss franc in a risk off environment does do well um and we do have some risk off sentiment but so equally does the us dollar and i say equally but um, uh, the the dollar does do well in the in a risk off environment and a risk on environment. So um, a bit of more of a tougher trade in the risk off environment, but I do think overall the dollar is way ahead fundamentally uh, of the Swiss franc and the Swiss economy. So again, probably part of least resistance is to the upside. Even if you get a pullback, um, should be hopefully uh, more more dollar buying. Dollar CAD. Uh, the CAD has seen very. Um, you can see pretty much what's happened is. Uh, the oil has pretty much uh, sold off this week, risk off. Um, first of all, the CAD doesn't do well in the risk off environment. And secondly, um, with oil selling off, um, you know, and, and the dollar doing actually doing quite well, you're seeing this pretty much happen. So fundamentally, this was uh, uh, to be expected. 
So uh, looking at where we are currently, I'm going to move this supply zone up here. Yeah, that's probably it. And um, again, understanding from a risk off situation, you would really want to buy the US dollar. Um, from a risk on perspective commodity currency, the, uh, the the Canadian dollar, if you start to see oil uh, bounce back, the Canadian dollar is the one to buy. Not necessarily, I wouldn't say against the, the US dollar, for example, but I would probably more trade that against the uh, the Swiss franc and the, and the Japanese yen. But um, let's see what happens. But if you do want to get uh, short here, that is really a nice uh, you know, pin bar. Um, but it depends on, again, more fundamentals, because if there is more risk off sentiment, then there's no pin bar in the world that's going to uh, want to hold, you know, uh, and reverse, right? It's just basically a sign of profit taking because you don't know whether that's profit taking or it's a reversal, right? If, if, if I'm a trader that got involved here, of course, I'm going to look to take some profit somewhere around here, right? So you have no idea whether this is profit taking or reversal. The only time you will know whether something is likely to be a reversal is if you understand fundamental analysis, whether this is a bargain for the Canadian dollar or likely seen as a bargain for the, for the Canadian dollar against the US dollar or not, right? If it is, then this is likely to continue to the downside. If not, then this is gonna continue going to the upside. It's literally as simple as that. You can't take so much meaning from, you know, looking just at pin bars in isolation. You have to understand what's going on in the, in the background. So uh, from this currency pair, I'm not really too, uh, I'm not really trading it at all. Um, harder to read when it comes to the fundamental analysis, but as long as risk remains probably more off than on, then the path of least resistance is to the upside. Um, and again, waiting on Jackson Hole as well, because you could have um, a revaluation of the dollar if uh, Jerome Powell comes out as being more dovish than hawkish. New Zealand dollar, US dollar, again, being in a more risk off environment we've seen um the commodity currencies sell off so again there's no demand zone there's no technical analysis that's going to stand in the way of fundamental and risk sentiment analysis all right so you've seen this start to uh, happen sell off um let's start drawing some demand zone see if there's anything that we can potentially get so there's a demand zone there another demand zone in and around here so um interesting news matter of fact on the um, rbnz is that they uh um governor or says that next rbnz meeting live even if outbreak persists so governor or speaks in interview with bloomberg television it would take a significant shock to change rate hike plans so rate hikes are generally positive for the um for a currency so what that actually means is that if they're the first to high rates, in fact this could be seen as an absolute bargain i really would like to see risk on uh come into play uh for me anyway because that was going to be really really nice a really nice level to look for long trades but if, as long as risk remains off or more off than on i should say then um uh it's in the short term it's a more unpredictable but if you do want to get long in this, uh, I totally understand why you would, and I do think that this is um, this is these levels here. I think are, are brilliant for uh, potential upside. But again, New Zealand dollar against the US dollar, not so much uh, buying that. I'm looking pretty more looking at weaker currencies like the um, uh, the uh, New Zealand Swiss and the New Zealand yen for for potential buyers. If you're looking for any kind of sell trades, waiting for prices to come up into this supply zone, this. 0.70 level before looking at getting short pound dollar and uh, the pound's been suffering a little bit um, doesn't necessarily do great in a risk off environment and also we've seen some positive news out around the US dollar um, there was uh, some news that came out against the pound and it was to do with inflation so inflation uh, actually pulled back so uk inflation posts a temporary slowdown on its way to four percent uh, so the uk inflation eased in july in what is widely seen as a blip on its way to double uh, the bank of england's target this year so um so in the short term uh inflation came down to two percent and as we know, and as I've said before, when when prices come back down to um, uh, the two percent target, 
what generally happens is that central banks prefer to hold interest rates. They have more of a neutral bias, right? So um, if they have more of a neutral bias in the short term, and whereas there's another bank that has maybe a bit more or a bit more hawkish in the in in the short term, then you're seeing pretty much a bit of a pullback. But that isn't necessarily expected to last because <clears throat> if you scroll down, uh, um, the economist uh, Yale uh, Selfin, chief economist at KPMG, said we expect we expect inflation to accelerate further during the rest of the year, rising significantly above the Bank of England's 2% target as supply chains remain under strain faced with a strong rebound in demand, said um, said The Economist. So um, this might be just a blip when it comes to uh, the um, inflation, but we want to see inflation numbers start to rise before looking at the um, uh, buying the pound and the reason why is because the data has to support the narrative the narrative being that if inflation is rising above that two percent target yeah then it puts more pressure on the bank to do what high rates and if they are hiking rates then the british pound should want to appreciate that's the way that it goes so there is a nice <clears throat> well i say a nice but it's a decent level of demand here it's been touched several times so for me probably a deeper pullback into one of these zones Again, not the prettiest, but I think that uh, with support and resistance in and around this area, this 135 area, I think that round number is really nice. Again, prices have been touched here, here, and then they've reacted there. So I think this 135 level would be really nice for a buy. In the short term, though, I think the, uh, the, the dollar has the advantage. Any pullbacks into supply, uh, a short trades, um, you can get involved in some short trades if you want to trade this currency pair as a path of least resistance it's probably to the downside until really the pound starts to uh, uh, show that inflation is rising moving on to the euro dollar euro dollar um, <clears throat> the euro is weak and uh, I was saying this to the traders in the private mentoring group that we are probably likely to continue to go to the downside I was saying this last week as well in fact, that we would see um, some more downside potential, and this is pretty much what you're seeing. Uh, so we've there's no demand zone again that will stand in the way of um, of really the fundamental analysis. So uh, fib retracement is what I'm looking for. We've got supply right here, uh, and we've got in fact supply there as well. So understanding where we are. I think this being a bit of support, broken support should turn resistance. I do think that um, any kind of pullbacks, um, I think not necessarily to the underside of that zone, I think probably this zone here would be a better area to look for any kind of short trades. But again, it's, it is highly dependent upon what the Federal Reserve say at Jackson Hole. So any pullbacks into that zone um, into the 1.17 area is definitely and, and above that is going to be um, if you're looking for short trades that for me is is really the, the best area um, the underside of this area looks a bit too obvious for uh, for short trades and there is a potential for this actually to be a bit of a stop hunt anyway um, for those of you who are in the uh, private mentoring uh, group you'll understand the the, fun, um, uh, the stop hunt here and uh, but I think again I think the path of least resistance is still to the downside so let's see what happens um, and again the euro fundamentally euro slide uh, takes currency to line in the sand for bulls so prospect of monetary easing risk aversion weighs on the euro currency minutes from fed meeting could spur declines says saxo bank so uh, the euro is on the cusp of breaking down to new lows against major glo major global peers weighed down by the prospect of prolonged monetary stimulus from the european central bank and a rush for safe haven assets and um so again it's really more about monetary policy and this is a paragraph um, that's worth uh, noting is but unlike major central banks including the Fed and the Bank of England the ECB has given little indication it's ready to scale back on its bond buying program anytime soon again scaling back on bond buying would be positive for a currency would appreciate the currency and if the Bank of England are signaling that they are and the Fed are signaling that they are yet the ECB are not then 
the ECB out of the out of the three currencies should be probably lagging behind, and that's lessening the euro's allure. Already one of the worst performing major currencies this month, and again, this is not hard to tell, right? If you keep up to date with what's going on with the central banks and the fundamentals then you would have known this. If you don't, uh, then you are literally, um, you know, trading blind, right? It was obvious uh, that the euro dollar was going to go to the downside. Um, and this is just due to monetary policy, right? We knew from the Fed being more hawkish there, the euro being more dovish, and look what really what's happened, the path of least resistance. So um, for me, I think uh, again, until uh, if, if the Fed come out, at Jackson Hole and of hawkish, any pullbacks for me are buying opportunities for the dollar. Euro, yen, um, again, risk off. You're seeing pretty much the effect of risk off. Prices going to the downside. Um, I'm going to move this demand zone, as there's probably no more demand there, down to this area here. In fact, no. In fact, there is a little. There is some demand just there as well. Yeah, so we're still within that zone. Just slightly delete this. And again, really the, 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 the question is, is from a risk on perspective, you probably want to look for um, buying the euro. But from a risk off perspective, the yen is going to be the one that really uh, does appreciate and you're seeing that as we've seen that pretty much this week but um, again depends on um, sentiment so if you are looking to buy the euro I would probably say now is a decent time or the 127 area if uh, you're looking to uh, continue selling the uh, the Japanese yen or sorry buying the Japanese yen and shorten this currency pair any pullbacks to that 129 area is going to be a decent uh, sell Aussie dollar Aussie dollar again uh, with risk off being more prevalent than risk on and uh, really the, the, the dollar being the dominant currency when it comes to uh, monetary policy. Australia is still uh, suffering with uh, lockdowns and potential um, higher unemployment as a result of their lockdowns you're seeing what's pretty much happening again a, a clear divergence between the two fundamentally and um i think this is going to be the, the the first area to look for any kind of buyers there could be some profit taking here and if there is then um i do think that that might be a decent area for a buyer but you'd really be buying that based off of dollar weakness rather than australian dollar strength if you're looking for a continued sell trades you're really looking for a, a quite a big pull back up into this one sorry 0.73 area before looking at short trades um, so yeah let's see what happens with that nothing really much to say I do think that the Australian dollar though um, once it starts to get their economy starts to get back on track I think the Australian dollar is going to be an absolute bargain at these prices but we'd have to really see the, uh, the data support the narrative so I think that 0 0.7 or 70 cent level is going to be uh, a, a, a a very key area um, for the Australian dollar. Hopefully, they can get back on track, and if they do, then it's going to be a really nice buy, I think. Uh, Aussie yen again, risk off. You're seeing the Japanese yen strengthen. Not surprising where the uh, the direction of travel has been. And um, yeah, so we're seeing uh, sell off. And buying the Japanese yen but again I do think that there is a, a pullback coming at some point don't know whether it's a, st a sustained pullback but if a uh, risk starts to come back on yeah then I think the Australian dollar actually is a decent buy in and around these areas we are at a bit of a key area you can see that this zone has been used once twice not necessarily you know the, the, the best uh, sell-off there but there was a nice rejection here and hopefully within that demand zone there are going to be support and resistance traders looking at getting long here as well profit taking at least which should increase some sort of demand if you're looking to buy um, and let's see what happens because even in a risk off environment the market doesn't continue to go down forever right there's pullbacks due to liquidity liquidity hunting and then you're looking at potential um, continuations but the question is can you take advantage of the um, pullback and so uh, let's see what happens there. Um, but again, you're going to have to really wait for 
prices to come all the way up to here to this 81 level before even looking at getting short or looking for a bit of a bullish candle bearish candle and then looking for a pullback into that um, supply zone somewhere around there moving on to gold finally and gold um, this week has really kind of just settled in really hasn't really moved at all uh, over the last week so um, at the moment I do think that this area here from a demand zone perspective is decent for a buy this level has been touched several times so I do think that if prices do come down here I don't know whether that's going to hold but again this is really kind of driven by more risk sentiment so if and and the dollar so it's a bit of a tougher trade if um, inflation's still getting out of hand then you can expect prices to go higher and also if the dollar is a bit more dovish um, uh, the Federal Reserve a bit more dovish then that should obviously push the gold uh, higher as well there has been uh, a company called uh, uh, Palantir buys gold bars as hedge against black swan events. So company spent 50 million on 100 ounce gold bars in August. So customers can now pay for software. Um, so basically um, Palantir Technologies said it's preparing for another black swan event by stockpiling gold bars. Don't know what that black swan event may be, uh, but they seem to think that obviously they got to hedge themselves, right? They got to protect themselves. So the company spent 50 million, um, $50.7 million on gold this month part of an unusual investment strategy that also includes startups bank check companies and possibly bitcoins so um interest in that um you know there's companies buying gold and trying still trying to protect themselves we're not out of the woods yet um but again if you do want to get short on gold it's really kind of a pull back to this 1810 area if you're looking to buy gold the earliest opportunity is probably at this um 1729 area to look for a buy in gold but again the picture is not that clear with, with with gold um and i think again all eyes are on the federal reserve jackson hole and let's see what happens there anyways guys that brings us to the end of the week for those of you as well who have um, reached out to me i will get back to you um, and get back to you shortly i've uh, just been really busy this week and i definitely will get back to all your emails and comments so thank you for the support Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I will see you guys uh, next week in, next, in the next video. Take care and uh, um, stay blessed.